and welcome everyone to our A2J Author New User webinar. This is Jessica Frank with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. With me today, and whose screen you can see, is Rochelle Klempner. She is Chief Counsel for the New York Courts um, Access to Justice Program, and Rochelle is going to be talking a little, uh, talking today about the New York State Court experience using A2J Author. Good morning, or good afternoon, depending upon where you are in the country. Uh, welcome new users and old users to the New York State Court Systems Experience with A2J Author. Let's get started. So as Jessica told you, I'm Michelle Klempner and I am the Chief Counsel in the New York State Court's Access to Justice Program. The New York State Court's Access to Justice Program is a statewide program in the New York State Court System and we work uh, to make it easier for people to navigate the court system when they don't have an attorney. So we're going to try something a little new here. We're going to take a poll. Uh, Jessica's going to help me out. So how many litigants navigate the New York State court system each year without an attorney? I want you guys to take a guess. Do you think it's 200,000, 500,000, 1 million, or 2 million? You think about that for a second. <laughs> Uh, sixty-seven percent have voted. So those of you that haven't voted, get that vote in. All right, we're at eighty-nine percent. Fifty percent said one million. Twenty-five percent said two million, and twenty-five percent of the people said half a million. Nobody said two hundred thousand. So I say that one million is the winner here. All right, I closed the poll, and now we're back to your screen. So you guys say that one million is the, is is your best guess, which is pretty much a lot of cases. Let's see. Actually, it's not 1 million. Believe it or not, it's not even 2 million. It's actually an estimated 2.3 million people navigate the New York State court system each year without an attorney. I mean, that is mind-boggling. That's, that's more, that, more litigants than some entire states have, you know, cases. So you can see in New York, we have quite the unrepresented litigant um, population. And as you know, with the economic downturn, uh, we don't have enough pro bono lawyers or legal aid attorneys or bar association lawyers. We just don't have enough um, people to help meet the public's legal needs. And as all of you are very well aware, uh, you can't really access the court system without completing uh, a written court paper. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You can't start a case. You can't answer a case. Everything requires written papers. And we all know that litigants face tremendous challenges um, when they have to complete a paper form. They have the complexity of the legal system. They don't know the, they don't know the law. They have language and comprehension difficulties. Uh, the entire process is extremely intimidating, basically all of the above. So document assembly programs have become an increasingly important solution to address these needs. The New York State Court's Access to Justice Program makes document assembly programs that help unrepresented litigants prepare their court forms. And we also do an awful lot of other work. You could read about it in our report, our annual report, but basically we also work on volunteer lawyer programs. We uh, work, uh, do a lot of work in the community. We have a mobile legal help center that we partner with. We do a lot of online publications and our, uh, our statewide website, nycourthelp.gov as well as the document assembly program. So now I'm going to briefly tell you how we got started with document assembly and A2J author. So our story begins with just Judge Fern Fisher. Judge Fern Fisher is the director of the program that I work in, and she, at uh, the time that this story starts, she was the administrative judge of the Civil Court of the City of New York. Uh, just to get you an idea, the civil court has about a million filings um, per year. Uh, it's a big court. It does civil cases and housing cases and small claims cases. She wanted to make some sort of kiosk for unrepresented tenants to help them prepare their defenses and counterclaims when they were sued for non-payment. And why did she want to assist not New York City tenants? Basically, in New York, the law is very complicated, and when you get served with a non-payment case, you have only five days to put in an answer. And most tenants 
The majority of tenants, like 99% of them, are unrepresented, and they usually file their answers to the non-payment cases, if they file an answer at all, uh, without you know, raising any defenses and counterclaims. So back in 2002, this is now 13 years ago, Judge Fisher and the Civil Court partnered with Columbia Law School's Technology and the Digital Age Clinic, and that was to make a logic tree for a tenant answer program. It wasn't even to do a document assembly program. It was just to do the logic. And for those of you that are at law schools, you can see the story begins with a partnership with a law school. Law schools can play a very important role in um, this kind of progress and access to justice. So after the logic was completed in 2004, Judge Fisher needed technology to make the program. And we had no money, and we had no idea how we were going to build it. And just fortuitously, Jeff Hogue, from, who at the time worked at the Legal Assistance of Western New York, Law and Legal Services, he called and he had a Legal Services Corporation um, Technology Initiative Grant. And he was looking for a partner to make a downstate tenant answer program. It's kind of wacky how we needed a, to make a program at the same time that he was looking, and he had called the court system. He was making a program for upstate New York, um, and since the law is so different for downstate New York, uh, we partnered with that TIG grant. And in 2006, the court system completed its first A2J author program made in partnership with Lonnie and LSC. We loved A2J's features and how they addressed many of those challenges we mentioned earlier about that litigant space when they make their court papers. And we decided to make more document assembly programs using A2J Author as the front end. We do make um, some hot docs programs, um, but only for advocates or legal services groups we, um, because they don't need all the bells and whistles that come with A2J Author. Um, every program that we make for unrepresented litigants uses the A2J front end. So that's just our personal choice in New York. So in 2007, we contracted with ProBonoNet to host our programs on the Law Help Interactive LHI server, uh, which at the time was called Nepado. Um, why should you? Why did we contract with ProBonoNet? We're a court system. We wanted to have the ability to make whatever kind of program we wanted. We wanted to be able to make landlord programs that legal services corporation, legal services partners wouldn't necessarily be interested in making. Uh, we wanted to be able to have that kind of freedom, and we also wanted the benefits that you get when you join the LHI community, access to other you know, calls and other developers and other um, programs. So in 2007, we hired our own attorney technologist to work on our statewide document assembly program. Uh, some of you may know Sun Kim. She's extraordinary. Uh, she's also an attorney. We thought that um, we made a decision that we thought that it would be best to have an attorney working on the um, technology end. So it's kind of a, a neat job for a lawyer. And so where are we today? Uh, today we currently have 25 ATJ programs. Um, you can see they are. Uh, is a, these are a list of our programs on our NYA2J site, and they are also available on our nycourthelp.gov um, site. Um, and all of the programs look just like the one you're watching now. We named our A2J author programs DIY do-it-yourself forms, and the reason we did that is so that they would give people the idea that they could they were for self-use that you know, they would understand that DIY meant it was something they can do themselves. Litigants can use our programs on the internet. It's on Law Help and our own court's website, as well as in court help centers, clerk's offices, and public access law libraries. And our programs have been very successful. We have programs for Supreme Court and Family Court and our Surrogates Court, our City Court, our District Court, our Town and Village Courts, there's like 1,200 of them or so, our County Courts, our New York City Civil Courts. Basically, we have programs in all of our courts except for Criminal Court at the moment, and we're working on that as well. And we've made programs in all these areas of the law, housing, consumer, family, civil, wills and estates, guardianships, matrimonials, basically all of the above. Um, we have targeted the areas where we, the court system has the most unrepresented litigants. 
In 2009, we had a little over 20,000 completed A2J document assemblies. And last year, we had nearly 130,000 completions. I know you're dying to see a graph. I'm going to show it to you because in 2008, over here, it was 8,000. And, and as you see, it's a beautiful, lovely progression. We've been very successful, very pleased. So basically, using A2J Author has been a win-win for the New York State court system. Our feedback shows that the programs improve access to justice for unrepresented litigants, as well as improve court system efficiency. So our feedback, our litigant feedback, consists primarily of an optional user survey that prints out with every assembled document. I'm show you quickly what our sur sample survey looks like. It is a short survey with just nine quick questions. And then these questions, another question about age and income. And it has directions to the clerk to return the surveys to us after, after they, the litigant turns them into the courthouse. And then a little more information for us here. And so our surveys. They tell us the date the program was used, in which program, and what county, so we learn where it was used. Um, they tell us, of course, pro problems that users are having with the program so that we can make improvements, because we might have missed something. They show us where our outreach and training are working, and they also might show us where the programs are not being used and our, we need to do more training. They give us some demographic information about the users. They tell us how great the programs are, and they make us feel really good. So basically, all of the above. The surveys also tell us that 95% of our users feel that the A2J program saved them time. And that's pretty amazing. This is 95% of home users as well as users in the courthouse, or it doesn't matter where they've used it. We have 10,000 plus survey comments which primarily express gratitude and appreciation. They primarily they say thank you or great help or great assistance. But some of the common themes that we've noticed are that, you know, how easy the programs are to use, how much time the programs save them, how the programs gave them more confidence and, and empowered them to continue the case on their own. They praised the procedural assistance they got. They love the fact that it saved them money. And of course, all our programs are free. And another nice benefit. Um, they improve the perception of the court system for a lot of users. You can go and read samples of our litigant comments. We have them on our website, um, which is uh, nycourts.gov backslash nyatj. You see here the sampling of some of our user testimonials. You see here all forms should have a DIY form program option. It saves a lot of time and there are no errors. It also saves a second trip to the court. This really helped me through the process. It was clear and easy to understand. Thank you. Um, these, are, these are all great. Thank you for making this process easier. It allowed me to focus on the content of the document. The friendly prompts made this task manageable. And you'll see these go on and on and on. We just post um, some of our favorites and uh, pretty amassed a lot, quite a bit of them. So now I'm going to take another little poll, cute little poll, um, and ask you a question about um, which of the following do you think is not a user survey comment? Jessica, okay. you want to set up that poll? Yep, I just launched it, so you all should see it on your screens now. Okay, so which is not a user survey comment? Is it, I liked the graphics with the figures and conversations? Is it the DIY program is the best thing the court system ever did? Is it, it was much easier than filling out the forms? Uh, is it I give it out I give it out of ten apples a full ten and a plus, or is it it would be nice to have a cup of coffee while you type this? Which of these do you think is not a true user survey comment? percent of you have voted and 57 percent say the last option it would be nice to have a cup of coffee while you type this 
it would be nice to have a cup of coffee while you type this. Um, I am actually, I don't want to, I'm, I'm untruthful. Um, all of those were comments were on the previous stream were actually made by unrepresented litigants. I'm sorry that I made you vote. And uh, yes, we actually got a comment that's from somebody that wanted a cup of coffee with their um, court form. So to continue, um, we also receive court personnel feedback. We collect testimonials from our court personnel. And you cannot read any staff comments, unfortunately, because these are only on our intranet. They are confidential. So uh, only our court personnel have access to them. But I will tell you that most of them praise the programs for how much they improve court efficiency. And I think I'm going to tell you another, give you another little poll. All right, and I'm ask you which of the following is not a staff comment about the A2J program. All right, it's so which is not, which do you think is not an actual staff comment about the A2J program? Um, is it my staff spends less time answering litigant questions? Is it A2J forms are more accurate and complete than paper forms? Is it I am able to serve more litigants at a faster pace? Is it A2J minimizes litigant frustration? Or is it A to J, let's be eat my breakfast while litigants help themselves? Which do you think was not made by a court clerk? So far, 100% of the vote goes for the breakfast one. 70% of the people have voted, and they all say A to J lets me eat my breakfast while litigants help themselves. OK. So you all said that there isn't a clerk out there that would say, let me eat my breakfast while litigants help themselves. Well, I lied again. <laughs> Would you believe it or not, all of those comments on the previous scheme were made by New York State court personnel. Yes, a, a court clerk actually said, he likes the A to J program because he can help five or he can put five or six people on the computer at one time in the clerk's office and sit back and eat his breakfast. So another another way to advertise the program to your staff. Um, since card staff love our program so much, our surveys actually show that 65% of our users learned about the program from court personnel. So our court personnel are really our greatest promoters and advertisers of the program. Now I'm going to tell you some more statistics. And these come from a family court study that was done last summer in partnership with the National Center for Access to Justice. And we did a study of just one of our DIY form programs in the Bronx County Family Court. It's a support modification petition DIY program. And um, we did surveys for it. We did four surveys. And they, we surveyed litigants that were in the help center and litigants that were in the courtroom. And there were also magistrates and court clerks that were surveyed. Uh, unfortunately, this report is not out yet. It's not published. You can continue to check the National Center for Access to Justice website in the future. It should be out in the near future. I did see a preliminary report, so I have some statistics to share with you. 99% of the help center, center litigants that were surveyed agreed that the ATJ programs were easy to understand. That's pretty amazing, because you have to understand that the Bronx County Family Court, the litigants that, that uh, go to that court are, um, the Bronx borough is one of the least educated boroughs in the country, as well as also a very um, poor borough. Um, the majority of litigants also reported that they felt increased comfort with the program, calling them by name and the presence of the pop-up. And the litigants liked the Learn More feature as well. A 2% of the Help Center litigants said they didn't think it took a long time to complete the filing process. And 72% said they thought it would take longer than it did. And so we like those stats, too, because we think it's amazing that people actually came to family court and, and there, it, it, it exceeded their expectations that the process was quicker than they thought it would be. 
using these programs. 82% of the help center litigants agreed that they felt less stressed going through the program. Um, many reported that after using the programs, they felt proud of themselves. They liked that they got to tell their story. They liked that they were making progress in their case. And they felt more in control of their case. Aren't these numbers terrific? 95% of the help center litigants said they would use a DOI form program again, and 96% said they would recommend the program to a friend. Nearly 90% recommend that the court make more programs, that we should expand the DIY form to other, to other types of proceedings. Most of the help center litigants stated the program improved their opinion of the court. And this is a nice byproduct for court, system, court systems that are thinking about making these programs because 67% agreed that the presence of the terminals in the health center was something that upped their opinion of the court, and 68% agreed that um, the programs improved the way the court helps people who don't have lawyers. Um, we like this. I mean, you know, most people have a very negative perception of the court system. And so the study concludes that by creating a more user-friendly, welcoming, and efficient case initiation process, the DIY form program helps mitigate some of the barriers to access to justice for those who cannot afford a lawyer. Accordingly, the study supports the further expansion and investment in the DIY form program and DIY forms generally. OK, so I told you about how we got started. I told you about where we are you know, right now. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, New York's plans for the future. Um, let's see. E-filing. We want um, unrepresented litigants to be able to send their court papers that they make with A2J author directly to the court without having to make a trip to the courthouse. To me, this is the most important thing we can do for, for these programs. We have people that can't afford to pay their credit card bills or their rent, that they need their jobs, yet they have to take off a day of work so that they could go file their papers. Um, if we could knock that part out of it, we're going we're gonna to help everybody everywhere. So we actually already have a hot docs program that can transfer the litigants data directly into the court's case management system. And this program is a DV program that helps victims obtain a temporary order of protection. So far, that domestic violence e-fileable advocate program has been a great benefit for the litigants and the advocates in the court. It reduces the wait time for everybody. It saves our court staff hours of data entry time. It gives the court credible, legible, complete forms. And it, it allows the court to handle more cases per day. It's been very successful. We also know from the family court study um, that, like I mentioned, was conducted in a very poor and um, poorly educated county. Um, we know that 9 out of 10 um, people feel comfortable with the internet, and they, felt, and they have a, access to the internet, or they own a smartphone. And that's significant to show that you know, if we make an, an online program, people will be able to use it. We also saw that 88% of the health center litigants said that they felt they could complete the program by themselves outside the courthouse, and that they 83% said they thought it would be very helpful if the court had online e-filing. So we're working on a project right now to make that support modification petition DIY form program um, into an e-fileable um, program that will go right, the data go right into case management. Some of the parameters that we're insisting on when we make this new project um, is that we want it to be an A2J 5.0 so that it can be used from a mobile device. We want to make the program so that the litigant does not have to have a printer. Um, we're going to make it, you know, um, signify to the court, signal the court that the court needs to mail them papers if necessary. And we don't want to require the litigant to have to sign on to the program or get in um, or give us an email address because um, not all litigants have email addresses, and many of them have privacy issues and things like that. The goal of, of all of these is that of all this is that we just want to make the program um, apply to as many unrepresented litigants as possible. 
Um, and if you're interested in finding out whether we succeed, you can follow us on Twitter at NYCourtsA2J. Um, just give us about another year. <laughs> So now um, I'd like to give you a brief demonstration of A2J Author, and I need a volunteer from our audience to assist me. And um, it's very painless. You're just going to be um, telling me what to fill in over the uh, phone. Oh, we have a volunteer. Great. Um, Elizabeth Arledge, I'm going to unmute you. So this is Elizabeth with uh, Voices for Civil Justice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I lied again. I'm going to make this very painful. <laughs> Okay. So Elizabeth, can we hear you? Let's Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we okay. I can hear okay. you now. All right. Okay, so Here we go. um please type your name. What would you like your first name to be? All right. So I can make up anything, right? Uh oh you're typing. Uh sure, that's key. Middle name? Uh optional, no. but you see it's in black and not red. <laughs> we can let's skip it if you want. Okay, let's skip it. And last name? Uh, it's spelled A-R-L-E-D-G-E. A-R-L-E-D-G-E. Arledge, mm -hmm. do I have that? That's right. Mm -hmm. Hello, Betsy. I love the way A2J programs put the person right into the program and it gives you a personalized feeling by remembering your name. So very cool. Um, don't you love that too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now you can choose your gender. Would you like to be male or female? I think I'll just stick with female today. Okay. There you go. Um, now we're going to walk together to the end to the finish line, and you see we're not far away from the courthouse. So, okay. um, which state are you from? Um, West Virginia. I see. Where are we going here? West hmm. Virginia. Cool. So you said that you were from the great state of West Virginia. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah. As you can see, verification screens can be used to confirm answers. This is kind of an important thing to do when you're developing and creating kind of verification screens so that people um, don't make mistakes and uh, don't have to clean things up later. Okay. Hey, Betsy. Which state do you think <laughs> had the most assemblies in, on LHI in 2014? Would you like a hint? I'm going to give yes. you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. Do you, oh, think it was, <laughs> do you think it was California, Illinois, Michigan, New York, or Texas? Oh, I think it was New York. I think you're right, going to be right. <laughs> For those of you who want a better look, there you go. A little, wow. little hint. And continue. Um, what do you think is the most used A2J program in New York? Is it the support modification petition, the New York City adult name change, the uncontested divorce program, a vacate default consumer debt, a landlord not payment petition program, or a small estate? Do I get a you want another? Do you want me to? Do you want me to tell you? Do you want to learn more? I'm going to guess that it's uncontested divorce, but let's see. Uncontested divorce. Yeah. Okay. Which is not an A2J feature that helps users complete their papers? Is it user-friendly guided interface? Remember, not. Which one of these does A2J not have? A user-friendly guided interface, pop-ups and learn more, that audio can be added, that graphics and videos and hyperlinks can be added, that radio buttons, checkboxes, dropdowns, and text boxes can be used to collect information, or that it can translate to text translations. Hmm. I'm going to go with audio. Audio. Okie dokie. In the box below, type what you like best about A2J programs. Hmm. So anything you like best about A2J programs. It could be anything you want. <laughs> Oh, she's typing Whatever my, you want. my answer. What would you, what, what would that you works. like? <laughs> I like the graphics. I really like the graphics. You like the graphics. Mm -hmm. Me too. 
Um, although, as, as Jessica and I were talking not too long ago, what, what would you think if, they, if A2J authors sold like a um, accessory package where you could add bling to the, to the you know, or different <laughs> outfits? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, congratulations, like that. Betsy. You finished. You're almost finished. You, I hope you enjoyed my presentation, and I hope you learned something about the New York State Court System's experience with A2J author. Now we're going to um, click on finish, and we're going to get your document and see what we got from you. Okay? So I'm clicked, I clicked finish. I'm waiting while it takes all my data and you know compiles my output. I'm clicking on get document. I'm opening my Word document. And of course, I got an error message. <laughs> it's processing. And Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. We're very happy. OK, so A2J Author Webinar. Thank you, Betsy. I hope you enjoyed the, this presentation. I think um, you were a very good sport. Um, so what have we learned? We learned that A2J Author programs are an effective way to increase access to justice for unrepresented litigants. We learned that unrepresented litigants and court staff in New York love the ATJ author program. We learned that the New York State Courts Access to Justice program has 25 DIY form programs made with ATJ author, and that last year we had almost 130,000 completed documents. Here's what we learned about Betsy. Your full name is Betsy Arledge. You're a woman. You are from the great state of West Virginia. Did you know that your state bird is the northern cardinal? I didn't know that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You said that New York had the most assemblies in, on LHI in 2014. I'm wondering how you knew that, but you're absolutely right. And by the by, New York had the most assemblies um, for the last four years before that as well. You guessed that the uncontested divorce program is the most used in A2J program in New York. And you guessed wrong. Um, actually, it's the support modification petition program in family court, but it was, which was assembled 27,000 times in 2014. But I will tell you that that was a very good guess because a lot of people in New York want to get a divorce. And that is our, that is our second most used program and up and coming. It might, might even change next term. Mm -hmm. good, good guess. Um, you said that audio can be added. Um, audio can, didn't help users complete their papers. Ooh, I have a mistake there. Well, this was sort of a trick question. It actually, actually, you can add audio to A2J programs, and we have added audio um, to a number of our A2J programs, including some of our programs. We've added um, a Spanish track to an English program. We've added Spanish tracks to some Spanish programs. Um, and it's been, um, I have to say, before you add audio, a little tip, you should wait and make sure the program's done. And that you're not going to have it out for a little while so that you don't uh, need to make changes, because then you're going to have to re-record your audio. Um, I also strongly recommend when you record audio, use people that uh, work for you or are going to be around, so that when you have to re-record something, they're easily available, so you have the same voice continuity. But it's not text translations. It's, uh, it's actually text translations. Audio A to J right now does not translate automatically translate your text, like you know Google Translate. But what we do in New York is we um, we translate um, each screen on a, in, a, in a program, and we put the translated text into a pop-up, and we name the pop-up like Espanol, so that somebody can use the um, somebody who maybe speaks just a, you know a little bit of English can go through the program and use all the pop-ups or someone that's assisting a Spanish user or a French user or whoever we put the languages in can help them to assist people. Um, <laughs> and last, you said that the best thing you like about ATJ author programs is that you like the graphics. And that is pretty much the end of um, our pretty much our, our small information that we collected from Betsy, but you all of course get the idea. Jessica is going to post the link to this um, this uh, presentation in, in, are you going to give it to them in the email to them or put it in the chat or something I, somewhere? Yep, I just so put it in the chat. If you want to go back on, what are you saying, Jessica? I just put it in the chat. So if you want to go back on and run through the A2J program again yourself, you can. 
you want to show it to somebody else, you can. Um, we're going to leave it up for some time. And at the end, you can get this list of these are um, just some of the links that I mentioned within the program. Um, we, uh, we have a best practices guide in New York State. We have an article that goes more in depth in New York about New York forms. Um, and we have, you know, our, our samples of uh, survey samples and comments and various other links. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, you also can get a copy of our user survey in the back if you go through it. Does anybody have any questions? John just said that he tweeted the link to Rochelle's, um, a, her A to J guide interview that she just used. So his Twitter handle is um, at John P. Mayer. And I'll tweet it out as well with our A to J author account. Uh, and I'll retweet it. We <laughs> <laughs> have a little Thanks. circle of tweets, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, here's a question. Um, have any other states done surveys or studies like the joint study with the um, National Center, the NCATJ? Um, that's a very good question because um, everybody's always interested in metrics. Um, the answer is not really. Um, and there are a couple, I believe there are a couple of states that had a TIG grant that you might be able to go on LSC and see what they studied. The, maybe they did a little bit of a survey. But the only ones that I've seen, I don't remember what state I saw, had such a tiny, tiny, minuscule sampling um, that I don't think that the, the survey stats are very um, reliable. Um, there are other states, the Michigan, Michigan, um, Michigan Legal uh, Assistance, Legal Help, um, I'm getting that name wrong, right, Jessica? Our good friends at, in Michigan, they recently did a, a, big, in, a big impact study also through, with a TIG grant on their um, divorce program, except their study is like the complete opposite of this one. This one was all, the family court study was all surveys that we did of litigants, and their study followed cases, the impact of the cases, and, and to see whether there was a difference between the, you know, completion of papers as opposed to people that used online forms. And that's a very good study, and I, I think we can um, make that available to you guys as well. Yep, it's Angela, Angela Tripp at Michigan. Yeah, Angela Health. Tripp in Michigan. And I've talked and to Angela. She said she's willing to share her information or talk to anybody about it. Right, that's, that's, that's also, I mean, the more people that do studies, the better. We are also working on a, a survey report right now with um, the New York State Courts Access to Justice Program is working on it with a A2J author um, to publish our um, more of our survey data, this, from the findings from this survey, and uh, from over a five-year period where we have, you know, about over 80,000 surveys um, of litigants that are going to be um, analyzed from this survey and published the results sometime during the uh, near the end of this year, and we'll keep you posted on that. But that's otherwise, I don't know, Jessica. You know of any other metrics like this? No. <laughs> no. No, we were, um, Rochelle and I were talking about this project yesterday, and they were showing us some of the, the comments, and there's 14,000 that we'll be going through. So this is huge. These are, like, this is such a large right. number of people that it's amazing. Right. We have over, in this five-year period, we have about 80,000 litigant user surveys that we're going to be looking through the questions about where did you use it, how comfortable you are with the Internet, do you think it saved you time? But then you see this question here, we really appreciate your help. Do you have any suggestions or comments? And then we have a complete, you know, it's a, it's a you know, free text here. Uh, that's what Jessica was uh, talking about. We have over 14,000 comments that we have to sort of categorize. It's kind of a, a big job. Um, but we're really looking forward to sharing that data because um, the truth is, is we didn't really know what to expect when we started back, you know, in 2006 when we put out our first program, which is why we um, instituted the survey. And um, our results have been so positive that our, you know, our Department of Technology that was completely, you know, wary of us investing in this kind of uh, process, our Department of Technology has completely come full circle and they completely support it. And um, they're working, you know, with us on, on doing more uh, and doing e-filing projects with this now. So um, I do think that metrics are very important, and and other our success should help other, you know, programs 
to, you know, if, if you need funders or you need to convince people to go ahead with these kinds of projects. Um, I, I, I think that our success is easily replicated. You know, how we, how we did, by the way, that National Center for Access to Justice study, what I think is a very important point about that is that that study was done completely for free. I mean, we're a program in the court system. The court system is pretty much has no money. We have no money in my program. And we were able to partner with the National Center for Access to Justice. The people that took the survey were all summer interns from judges' chambers that they volunteered to give us for you know a period of days, and as well as summer associates from big law firms that they donated to us to use for the surveys. Uh, the, um, the, the survey tallying itself was done by a survey company, Global Strategies. They donated their time pro bono to do the survey, um, you know, run, this, run reports for us. Um, and the National Center for Access to Justice is actually, you know, writing the report. So um, it, it, didn't, it might have cost us time, but it cost us nothing in money. And, and Pfizer, a corporation, the Pfizer company, um, actually um, donated their time to manage the students and do the scheduling for us, because I don't even have time to oversee the students. So it's amazing what you could do with partnerships. And you see from the New York's experience, it's all out of partnerships. If we hadn't partnered with uh, a legal services and a law school at the very beginning, then I, we wouldn't have be where we are today with this program. Thank you, Rochelle. This was um, it was excellent, and I'm not seeing any other questions. So, if, are there any last minute ones before we sign off? I'm not seeing any. So, thank you all for coming. And again, Rochelle, big thank you for this presentation. If you thank want. You for <laughs> you're welcome. Um, if you want to see this it, um, again, if you want to watch it again, or you're interested in the links, um, we'll have that on our YouTube channel, so youtube.com slash a to j author. Um, and I will tweet out that link as soon as we sign off here for the um, a to j guided interview. And a big thank you to Callie for letting us use their go-to meeting services. So thank you, everyone.